Hey friends, um, so it's 9 p.m. Day work is over um, and I decided to come up with a new series of um, screencasts about Azure DevOps uh, because I recognize that my last series is um, a while ago or happened a while ago and I also recognize that a lot of things have changed in the way we uh, at our company use it. Um, I learned a lot of stuff so I decided it might be a good idea to just share my new stuff with you guys because uh, the DevOps video kind of um, created some response from the community. So um, I'll start today uh, with one thing and then probably more videos will show up on this. Uh, so my first thing will be how to deal with uh, service connections in Azure DevOps and how basically not to deal with them. And I want to tell you why I think that Microsoft is recommending something there which shouldn't be recommended at all. Um, so with that, let's dive into it and start the first very video on Azure DevOps. Um, so I'll just put my face down here so you can see my screen. So I'm going to start today by going into an empty Azure DevOps organization for Coding Freaks here. Um, so uh, I am uh, just creating a demo project, uh, just a demo. Let's see. It's a private one as it should be Git and I don't know. Let's do the Coding Freak Scrum, whatever it that is. I don't care really. So the whole point here is that uh, when we talk about service connections, let's go to the project settings because this is the place to be when it comes to service connections. Here it is. So currently we don't have any service connection and um, if you don't, if you are not familiar with service connections, what this is, is basically saying, you know, it's cool, you have your source code um, and your tests and whatever managed here in Azure DevOps. So what this is now, whenever you want to uh, enable Azure DevOps, uh, the project to access something somewhere else, um, the basic stuff we use is Azure because we want Azure DevOps to use a pipeline to deploy something um, automatically into Azure. So that means that Azure DevOps now needs a key, a user, uh, essentially called the service principle in Azure. Anyway, um, it needs to be authorized to access Azure resources. Um, and this dialogue here, when I create a new service connection, is actually, uh, in my case, um, here, the way to go to create a new service principle automatically. I'll show you this or use an existing one. As you can see, there are other options too, like let's say Kubernetes down there. You just tell them, you know what? I, I have a Kubernetes cluster running somewhere. I know how to access it. I want to give you access to this Kubernetes service so that you, I mean Azure DevOps, uh, the project, you are able to do it on uh, my behalf. So I don't have to do it, you know how to do it and so on. Okay, cool. So let's select Azure Resource Manager here, hold, hit next and here's exactly uh, the thing I wanna talk about today. So here are four options basically um, down there. So let's go there, those four options. And one of them, as you can see, is highlighted and recommended. So I, must admit, I used it a long time, this option, and then I came to the conclusion that this is actually the worst thing. Uh, maybe this is the worst thing, I don't know. But out of the three, let's say, this is the worst option you could choose on the long run. It's the easiest no-brain option, whatever. But um, let me explain why. So what is going on? As you can see, this says service principle automatic and service principle manual. Also, there's something called managed identity, um, which I will explain in a second. So service principle here, what is it? Um, in order to understand it, let me go over to my Azure portal to explain what I mean. So a service principle is technically um, mostly created by adding an app registration in the Azure Active Directory. So the Azure Active Directory means the directory, which is the parent for the subscription in Azure, where you want to deploy something. Um, 
So when you go ahead and call the automatic service principle creation, what actually happens is that using the user you authenticated in Azure DevOps, this is here my user from the Azure Active Directory, he will use this user and on my behalf, he will go to Azure Active Directory and will kind of scripting for me the creation of the service principle and the role assignment of the then created service principle to the scope I will give him here. So let's go to the next window here by hitting service principle automatic. So this was, this will fail. It always fails the first time I load this window. Another bug you have to know. Uh, this only happens uh, to me because I am invited in so much tenants and so much other active directories that first of all, this dialogue is kind of, you know, doing its thing, spinning around. And then it will come up with, you seemingly don't have any subscription, which is basically not true, first of all. Then I hit F5 on my keyboard, reload the page. He does the same thing. And then all of a sudden he says, well, I think you have subscriptions. I say, well, thank you for this. But anyway, it's just explaining why this spins on my place. So what this wants from you, remember I'm in new Azure service connection, hitting the recommended automatic service principle. Uh, section. So what I can say here, you know what? I want you to create the service principle, which is the app registration in Azure. I want you then to search for subscriptions in my Azure tenant in this case. And then I want you to allow this service principle, which you have created to be contributor, which is a default Azure role uh, in this subscription. So let me see if he's fine with management groups um, and if he loads them, because then I can explain what this option is. Um, it's basically a better way to do it. So management groups now are, if you will, uh, folders or directories for subscriptions, which makes them a suitable target for role assignments. Because now what you can do, you can assign um, service principle contributor rights to a complete directory, which will then contain subscriptions in order to inherit the contribution right to the service uh, print, uh, to the subscription. So this is most of the times, if you're a little bit familiar with Azure, but not so deep inside, if you have the option to give something rights on a subscription directly or on a management group, you always should, in my opinion, decide to do it on a management group it's basically the same as giving pro uh, settings to a directory in the file system versus doing it for a single file, which almost always is the um, not so good option. So as you can see here, he's coming up and management groups, he detects them. So let me just quickly explain what you see here. Um, so maybe I go away, prepare my browser and give you just an idea if you never saw this what management groups are and yes this talk is you know concentrating on azure um so let me select my view here and sadly enough he shows the subscription ids i'm not sure maybe i cut it out later but anyway let's see um, <clears throat> um as you can see here is my tenant id um, here, which I probably will blend out. Um, and then there is um, this structure of uh, management groups, where, which follows kind of some advices. As you can see, I'm structuring my tenant here and I'm giving him like directories, which then allow me to go here or there and telling him, you know, on test uh, or production or on the root level, I want this and that user or service principle to have rights and then this inherits down. This is what I mean by management groups. And as you can see now on the Azure DevOps side, this is using my user here in the back, you see it a little bit, my face. This is using my user to read this out from different tenants, by the way. And then what I can do is I can say, you know what, I use this management group. So everything beneath this management group, every subscription will then have the role assignment of contributor to this 
currently invisible user and now let's let's do it let's call it uh coding freaks uh in azure just to show you that this is just the display name here in the list which will occur this has nothing to do with azure but let me quickly show you what this creates maybe let's go back here to uh, my window let me filter this out for a second so he's setting this up and now what i want you to show is that there will happen something whenever this is ready so this is what is it um, it's still doing it there it is so i can go over here and this is what he created first of all he went to app registrations and then this was created just right now okay this is the current day so this has got some application id which basically is the username this is the app registration which azure devops created as you can see he has like a naming convention which is the name of the organization followed by the name of the project and then the name of the resource in this case the management group which he was um, assigned rights to had assigned rights so let me go to this management group dev test to show you what happened there let me just quickly so that i don't um, every time show you uh, the complete stuff here let me go to management group i will just click here uh, to the one i just did it and then let me go to access control i'll show you that in a minute and then coding freaks let me filter this a little bit there there you go so i just filtered it so that you don't see all the other stuff so what you now see this is exactly this app registration which i showed you uh, just a second ago and then in access control on the management group what you see here is azure devops after creating this service principle this is what we call this app registration he gave it owner not contributor sorry for this error owner um, role on this resource which is saying directly on the management group because this is this resource he has owner permission and because of the technology behind management groups this gets inherited down the line so everything beneath it beneath this management group will inherit this setting which means that now my azure devops organize uh, project here having this service connection i can use this service connection in my build and release pipeline lines in order to access um, azure uh, and to create resources or deploy something to resources this is how this is happening this is using service connection you can basically see the same if you click on the service connection you have this link which basically will bring you in this browser session to exactly the window which shows you this app registration okay i hope this is kind of understandable but now back to the point why this is bad i tell you why this is bad if we go back to this one and let me just one more time go quickly over to the app registration which again is this user there which you can see let me go there to the app registration and hide away a little bit <laughs> coding freaks with the so here we go let me click on this app registration and let me do something let me explain here is it's blurred out for you guys this is kind of you know showing um, the settings and what's important here is that he created an app registration which is secured by a secret which i never see okay this is i never saw this he did it he created this if you will password for the user and then this whole entry here is nothing more than giving him access to retrieve this password lock himself into azure in order to do whatever whenever i tell him to do okay everything is cool but watch this date so currently this is saying next year so in one year uh, this password will expire okay so what should i do when it expires because my when this expires so on the 15th of february 2025 using this 
user, this uh, service connection, my pipeline will fail because the password is expired. So what now? Okay. Well, you, we can simulate this thing. This is basically saying we could go here creating a new secret for another year. Where is it? Here. Let's do it. This is my new secret. Here. I created it. Um, no description. And then I could mimic the situation by simply um, using uh, password upload. Let's see. Oh, in two years, I just mix it up. It's 2023. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just using a new password and then I let this guy die. So this way I simulated kind of the process of now this service principle, this service connection in Azure DevOps now is invalid. Okay, cool. But what if you go here and try to explain him that by editing the service connection, now you cannot explain Azure DevOps that the password is a new one. As far as I know, please hit the commands if you know. So the password changed, right? There is this password he knew is gone. He does not know anything about it. So now we need him to, um, you know, change it somehow so that he knows, no, don't use the old password, use the new one. Turns out this is not possible in Azure DevOps. Turns out what you need to do is you delete it and create a new one. And then if you are a clever guy, like I thought I am, you name it completely the same. Okay, because I thought that this is something unique, which he refers to. Turns out it's not the case. So imagine you have a pipeline now, which use in one year, right? which uses this automatically created service connection. Basically what happens is this is no longer valid. You create a new service connection, delete the old one. While you're doing this, your complete pipeline is stuck. And then comes the, the worst part of all. Whenever you now go into your pipeline, it's invalid. It will not run until you go there, click into every window. I'm referring to those pipelines where you have UI, like the release pipelines, and you just select it by UI, you have to manually do everything. So, and I hate this stuff. So on the same, so I, I personally think that this complete concept is kind of not good for Microsoft doing this. And inside the not good option, the Azure Resource Manager option one, is the worst you can have because all it does for me is it now automatically deleted the service principle because deleted the entry here, which might be nice. But on the other side, this is completely opposite of what you should do uh, when you follow things like the Microsoft Cloud Adoption Framework, which says basically have everything as uh, which is possible as infrastructure as code or automation stuff, whatever. Now we are going here to Azure DevOps and just saying, click, just do it for me, which is okay if it wasn't recommended because this is not what it should be. So instead of this, I would suggest using the service principle manual approach, which means you have to create the service principle beforehand and then you can use it. So what I show you here is now, Hey, I want to have access to a management group, which has an ID. Uh, let me see where this is, the management group. Let me again put this by side. So now the management group I'm referring to has an ID and I will try to mask it later. But anyway, it is, no, I don't have to. The ID of the management group in my case is just this one. Okay, so this is, you, you can know this. So the management group name in my case is nearly the same, but not exactly. So you have to do this. And now something interesting happens. He says, well, you, because you do it manually, you had to create a service principle beforehand. And now please provide this settings for me. And I prepared this. I'll show you this. So this is now my app registrations, AKA service principles with one which I created via a script or something. So this is uh, the Dev Deer DevOps test service principle. It already has a password, which I have here, which expires in two years. It has a branding because this is what I like. 
giving the DevOps logo and then giving him, for instance, a hint where the homepage is. I could even add some information for my co coworkers that this is the service principle, blah, blah, blah. And then with this in place, with this already generated by me on a second uh, a separate track, I can go here and grab the ID, which is totally okay. This is the key, uh, the ID, sorry. So this is the ID. And then I can grab the password, which I have defined here. And then the last thing is to enter my tenant ID, which you probably saw too in the management groups here. This is my, hey guys, it's me. Um, I had to uh, put this into the video because I recognize that this is barely seeable, anything of it. So please let me um, maybe show my screen without my face so that you can uh, see everything. I just wanna to show you here that this is how the window looks. This is where my face is all the way in the way and the mask. So just that you see tenant ID, service connection name, this and here is the screen. This is the window which is upcoming, please. Um, understand that I had to mask a lot of stuff like the tenant ID and it's moving up and down all the time because I'm an idiot basically. And yeah, I just wanted to tell you that sorry for this and uh, enjoy the rest of the video. Tenant ID, I will have to mask a lot in this video, I guess. So, and then I can say um, CF in Azure, whatever I like. So, and this way I'm saying in the Azure cloud, there's in my tenant, it's in this tenant, there is this management group ID with this name, you will check this. And in the tenant, you will find this service principle, aka username, using this password, or if I would like this certificate, and then I can tell him use it. And I can just a quick shout out here to this option. If you hit this option, what this means is in the process of generating this, you for every upcoming pipeline, in Azure, um, which is not currently existing. He will automatically grant access to this service principle, which basically is what I do most of the times. So verify and safe. So he's verifying if the access is, see how quick this war was? Because why, why did, did it work? What I didn't show you before, and I prepared some screenshots for this. Let me explain. So, what I did is, first of all, I had I have this group, this uh, security group, as you can see <coughs> here, it is a um, group in Azure Active Directory, which is called developers. And I just added this dev deer DevOps test uh, service principle as a member to this group. This was my first step. Okay, cool. So now consider this entry, the service principle as a colleague, which is not a human being, but it's still a co-worker of mine living in Azure only. And he has a username and a password. And it happens to be that this username is not a mail address, but it's a GYD. Okay, but other than that, he has a password which expires uh, in two years. And he's named, his display name is Deftier DevOps Test. That's it. That's a colleague of mine. And this guy now is a member of my development team. Okay, cool. So with this in place, I can go the next step. And what you see here now is the role-based access control for the management group DevT test. Remember, this is where I want it to be. And now what I did, I gave the contrib uh, contributor role and I could do owner too, whatever, to the group, not to the single entity of this app registration, to the group. So what I basically say is, whoever is in this group is also contributor on this uh, scope management group and everything below it. And that's it. And that's how you should do it. So now this is why the validation passed here, the validation process passed. And now I have a service principle here. And the next good thing is now that um, again, um, this is, um, this is uh, here. The next good thing is that I can change the password every time I want without deleting this. So it should be clear now for everybody that this is the, the state you want to be in and differentiate to the recommended from Microsoft again, 
So this is what is good. I like it. And this is what is bad. Uh, let me do it this way. I don't like it. And still it's recommended. Don't use it. So if you have any questions on this, um, go ahead and hit me. If you have critique, hit me too. Um, I just wanted to start with this thing, which was pretty unusual for, for me, I think, if you know my channel, because I didn't dive into more details. This is an important step for my upcoming series on Azure DevOps. So um, see any place here around in YouTube for updates coming uh, or for more video content here. But you need to understand this in order to understand what I do in my upcoming videos. Hope it helps. Hope you uh, see the advantage here and would be fine to see you in one of the upcoming videos too. Have a nice one. Bye.